reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, Dhritarashtra Quits Home. Text number 9. Kaya Vritya Vartitam Vaha Charad Bhikshiti Mandalam Irthani Kshetra Mukhyani Sevitani Habhutale Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Translation While traveling on the surface of the earth, how did you maintain your livelihood? At which holy places and pilgrimage sites did you render service? Purport by Srila Prabhupada Vidura went out from the palace to detach himself from household affairs, especially political intrigues. As referred to herein before, he was practically insulted by Duryodhana's calling him a son of a Shudrani, although it was not out of place to talk loosely in the case of one's grandmother. Vidura's mother, although a Shudrani, was the grandmother of Duryodhana, and funny talks are sometimes allowed between grandmother and grandchildren. But because the remark was an actual fact, it was unpalatable talk to Vidura and it was accepted as a direct insult. He therefore decided to quit his paternal house and prepare for the renounced order of life. This preparatory stage is called Vanaprastha Ashrama or retired life for traveling and visiting the holy places on the surface of the earth. In the holy places of India like Vrindavan, Haridwar, Jagannath Puri and Prayag, there are many great devotees and there are still free kitchen houses for persons who desire to advance spiritually. Maharaj Yudhishthira was inquisitive to learn whether Vidura maintained himself by the mercy of the free kitchen houses, Chatras. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport. So here is a conversation between two devotees. Both Yudhishthira and Vidura are pure devotees. So what's the kind of conversation that goes on between pure devotees is very evident in this exchange of conversation between uh, Yudhishthira and Vidura. Vidura has just arrived after the Pandavas had won the battle of Kurukshetra and Yudhishthira Maharaj was enthroned as the emperor of the world and Yudhishthira Maharaj has taken charge of ruling the whole world. At such a time Vidura is returning from pilgrimage. Vidura was staying in the palace of Hastinapura when Dhritarashtra was the caretaker king and even though Vidura was acting as a well-wisher of Dhritarashtra, giving him good advice for his own welfare, but it was not very much to the liking of Duryodhana, Dhritarashtra's eldest son, that Vidura seemed to be partial to the Pandavas. Actually, Vidura was just trying to be uh, fair to the Pandavas because Dhritarashtra and Duryodhana were conspiring how to kill the Pandavas so that Duryodhana could be enthroned as the emperor of the world. So this political intrigue was very much disturbing to Vidura. Because Vidura is a devotee, he is not interested in politics, much less in political intrigue. Intrigue means making secret plans to uh, harm somebody, uh, to put somebody down or to cheat somebody. So, since Dhritarashtra and Duryodhana were engaged in such political intrigue, Vidura was 
not at all interested in staying in the palace so he was looking for an opportunity to leave the palace for what purpose as is described here he went out of the palace to detach himself from household affairs so the real purpose of our human life is self realization so to pursue self realization a civilized human being who follows the scriptures has to take shelter of spiritual life in four different stages brahmacharya grihastha vanaprastha and sanyas and it is instructed in the scriptures that one begins as a student brahmachari and then progresses to become a householder a grihastha a family person and then further progress is made when at the end of the grihastha ashrama one retires from household life what is the reason for retiring from household life is to detach oneself from household affairs the nature of a uh, householder's life is such that by its very uh, characteristic household life means there is so much of entanglement so this entanglement is not at all conducive for spiritual advancement the very purpose of making spiritual advancement is to disentangle oneself from all material affairs but householder life is such that no matter how much one tries to be aloof from entanglement but it is inevitable that to some extent every householder must involve in family matters so in family matters there are so many different complications that arise the very nature of material existence is like that because we should understand why it is so complicated material existence it is because we are spirit soul and we are by nature spiritual beings and we are trying to settle down adjust ourselves and live comfortably peacefully very happily very nicely in material atmosphere so it's totally incompatible every one of us as spiritual beings material atmosphere is totally incompatible atmosphere for our actual happiness for our peaceful living for our permanent settlement it is not the place this material world is not the place but most of us are ignorant we think this is the this particular family i am born in this is my place this home i am living in is my place of residence normal place of residence so let me try to be happy here let me try to be comfortable here let me try to uh, settle down here but this is in ignorance about our own spiritual nature and about the characteristic of this material existence being totally opposite of spiritual that is material so therefore uh, householder life especially is something which entangles a person this is the general case now if somebody is engaged in devotional service even while living in householder uh, stage of life living at home with family members a person engaged in devotional service according to the instructions of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu can be completely detached from all household affairs even while living and maintaining the family this is the gift of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu 
देर फोर श्रीला नरोत्तम दास ठाकुर सेस गृह ठाको वने ठाको सदा हरि बोले डाको इट डजेंट मैटर वेदर वन इज लिविंग in the forest staying in the forest away from household life as a renunciant or one is living at home with family members griha or vana he says simply engage yourself always in chanting hari krishna so this is the mercy of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu because in this age it is not practical to leave home and either go to a forest or go to a holy place of pilgrimage and live there for the sake of spiritual advancement one may somehow visit some holy place or even visit a forest but to live there for spiritual advancement is not at all very practical uh, uh situation in this age in our present times so therefore chaitanya mahaprabhu says that wherever you are you must chant hari krishna in order to actually make spiritual advancement but during the time of vidura 5000 years back the situation was not so bad that uh there were holy places and there were forests when one could go where one could go and actually uh, uh make spiritual progress by associating with holy people spiritually advanced personalities who stay in such holy places or who stay in the forest to make that place suitable for spiritual advancement so it is said here that vidura went out from the palace to detach himself from household affairs he was seeking an opportunity because he was not at all interested in this householder life his real aim was self realization as an ideal uh, devotee so when duryodhana insulted him by calling him the son of a shudrani he was actually the son of a shudrani by birth vidura's birth is extraordinary he was cursed by one sage when he made a small mistake he is formerly yamaraj <clears throat> so yamaraj is in a very very responsible position yamaraj actually determines the extent of punishment to be given to very very sinful people so yamaraj made one small mistake in the case of one mandavya muni and yamaraj was cursed by mandavya muni to take birth as the son of a shudrani a degraded birth now we should carefully understand that birth by itself may or may not be a handicap if somebody takes birth in a good family then from the start from the beginning of their childhood itself they get proper education they get proper training they get proper uh, uh lessons in the real goal of life in the in the ultimate uh, uh, goal to be achieved in this human form of life etc but somebody is born in a family where the parents or the or the elders or the caretakers guardians are themselves not educated themselves not trained up they do not know what is the goal of life then such a birth is considered as a lower birth according to scriptures so any birth in which a newborn child has no opportunity for getting education training culture for actual spiritual advancement is considered a lower birth but 
lower birth in itself is not ultimately a disadvantage if somebody has got the human form of life why because in the human form of life one can make proper inquiries because of having developed intelligence though one may not make relevant inquiries when one is a very small child but as one grows up a certain stage when one actually becomes an adult is the stage when one can actually make proper inquiries as to who am i what is this world where have i come from what is my goal of life one can make this inquiries and if one is sufficiently serious about getting proper answers to these fundamental questions then one becomes successful in realizing what is the goal of life and pursuing that goal as a human being but if somebody is mindless or simply interested in some sense enjoyment uh, eat drink and be merry in the atheistic uh, way of uh, living then one misses the opportunity as a human being now this can happen not just to those who have lower birth this can happen to even those who have got the best opportunity to get training culture for example duryodhana duryodhana was born in a very very high class family dhritarashtra is the son of vidura sorry son of vyasadeva he had excellent parentage the best parents one can get he was born very brilliant but because of being carried away by the desire to uh enjoy power because he was born blind he could not become the emperor even though the eldest son of his father so he could not become the emperor therefore he was feeling that i am deprived of the this position because i was born blind and therefore when he got a chance to be a caretaker king emperor because pandu who became the emperor died young untimely death of pandu so yudhishthira could not be enthroned as the emperor so caretaker king uh, there, there was a need for a caretaker king so uh, dhritarashtra was enthroned as the temporary caretaker king so that time he became very very greedy ambitious and he sama wanted his own sons to succeed him so by this uh, uh greed for power he was carried away by maya and he became completely uh, blind to the ultimate goal of life and he actually engaged in uh, political intrigue in order to somehow kill the pandavas so merely having a good birth does not necessarily mean that anybody with good birth is going to realize the ultimate goal of life neither does low birth mean that it is impossible for a person with lower birth to actually understand what is the real goal of life like vidura now vidura is a contrasting example dhritarashtra in spite of the high birth he missed the goal of life of course in the end in this chapter it is explained that how vidura instructed dhritarashtra to actually pursue self realization towards the end of his life and dhritarashtra did that and he did attain self realization by the mercy of his younger brother vidura but 
before before uh, the battle of kurukshetra before dhritarashtra lost all his sons he was completely blind to self realization vidura on the other hand even though he is born as a son of a shudrani but he was always very alert as to what is the goal of life therefore having understood that the goal of life is self realization even though he was well situated in household life out of affection for his younger brother dhritarashtra had given vidura sufficient uh, facilities for living very comfortably even though vidura was not entitled to any um, inheritance because he was born the son of a shudrani so he was not entitled to any inheritance of the royal wealth dhritarashtra had inherited so dhritarashtra gave good amount of uh, facilities for vidura to live very comfortably but vidura was not satisfied simply living comfortably he understood the goal of life is self realization by making proper inquiries and he was trying to get out of this household life in order to free himself from household affairs so this is a lesson for us whether one is staying at home or one is staying somewhere outside home ultimately one has to detach oneself materially in order to actually uh, develop uh, spiritually to awaken our krishna consciousness we have to uh, develop detachment material detachment this material detachment is very easy in this uh, degraded age of kali yuga for one who takes to chanting hare krishna chanting hare krishna it actually purifies our heart of all material contamination whatever contamination of lust greed anger etc may be there typically material existence means we get contaminated by six different um contaminating factors arishadvarga it's called in sanskrit arishadvarga these are our six enemies within our heart kama krodha lobha moha mada matsarya so material dealings somehow pollute our consciousness that we develop some lust some anger some greed some intoxication huh? some madness some envy to different degrees everyone in material existence has got this contamination to different extent but to purify the easiest way is to chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains that the very first effect of chanting Hare Krishna is cheto darpana marjanam it cleanses our heart of all these material contamination so we can easily become materially detached by simply chanting Hare Krishna now vidura also was a devotee he could have actually stayed in the palace and also detached himself simply by devotional service but he did not want to be part of the political intrigue that dhritarashtra was involved in along with duryodhana so to get away from this political intrigue he decided to quit home that was the real reason so he went away to holy places of pilgrimage and in the holy place of pilgrimage what did he do he was seeking uh, the association of a self realized soul an enlightened soul actually holy place of pilgrimage are actually holy places only because of the presence of 
enlightened self realized souls who make that place holy so the bhagavatam says if somebody goes to a place of pilgrimage holy place of pilgrimage merely for taking a bath because holy place of pilgrimage there may be a sanctified water body just like a pure lake or a sacred river ganga is flowing because of which the holy place of pilgrimage becomes also known as a holy place so that is definitely beneficial taking bath in ganga or taking bath in a holy uh, sacred lake or a pond uh, is definitely beneficial to purify ourselves of sinful reactions anybody who takes bath in ganga or yamuna or any of the sacred uh, ponds or lakes uh, they do become purified of sinful reactions but simply taking a bath does not cleanse our heart of the tendency to commit sinful activities what happens people who go to a holy place take bath in ganga become freed of sinful reactions but after they come out and become again engaged in material activities they again commit sin again become sinfully implicated so the tendency to commit sin is not eradicated simply by taking bath in the river ganga or even visiting a holy place of pilgrimage that can happen the complete purification of even the tendency to commit sin so that no more further will commit any sinful activities that complete purification can happen only by pure devotional service which is possible only by taking shelter of a pure devotee of a self realized soul and under the instruction and guidance of such a pure devotee one executes pure devotional service therefore it is said in the scriptures going to a holy place just to take a bath is insufficient is insufficient for complete purification one has to seek out a pure devotee and in the association of the pure devotee take proper instructions to execute pure devotional service and thereby become completely purified so vidura was looking for searching for a pure devotee and he went on visiting different places till he came to haridwar and in haridwar actually he met uh, first he met uddhava uddhava directed him to maitreya rishi so then vidura met maitreya rishi and from maitreya rishi he became enlightened hmm. what is this enlightenment that he got finally because of which he uh, considered that uh, his visiting the holy places of pilgrimage has been successful when he realized that krishna is the ultimate goal of life and simply to engage in all activities for attaining permanent shelter at the lotus feet of krishna is the goal of life so when he understood this then he stopped asking further questions from maitreya rishi and he returned to the palace why did he return to the palace he had nothing to do in the palace in terms of living comfortably or enjoying some facilities no he came in order to deliver his elder brother dhritarashtra he came to actually instruct his elder brother about the real goal of life as self realization so uh, vidura uh, went on places of pilgrimage and when he has returned yudhishthira is asking while traveling on the surface of the earth how did you maintain your livelihood because 
devotees they don't become entangled while trying to maintain themselves for some minimum needs of some food clothing shelter hmm. they don't become entangled uh, that's why it is important to learn from such expert devotees how one can maintain oneself without being becoming entangled because the bodily necessities have to be met you know even to execute devotional service to practice spiritual life we have to maintain ourselves so how do we maintain ourselves especially while traveling it is very difficult uh, at home some arrangement can be made so that we can get some minimum basic needs but while traveling it is lot of lot of uncertainty hmm? so therefore this question by yudhishthira in order to elicit the uh, the reply from the expert devotee vidura yudhishthira is asking this question that while traveling on the surface of the earth how did you maintain your livelihood at which holy places and pilgrimage sites did you render service now rendering service is necessary in order to actually get enlightenment from a self realized soul this is what krishna says in the bhagavad gita tad vidhi pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya upadekshanti te gyanam gyanina tattva darshinah those who are tattva darshi those who have seen the truth those who have realized the truth gyaninah they are full of transcendental knowledge they have realized knowledge one should approach such a spiritual master and make relevant inquiries from him after having surrendered to him pranipatena the first requirement is one should surrender to such a spiritual master who is gyaninah tattva darshinah who is full of transcendental knowledge and who has realized that knowledge and therefore realized the absolute truth krishna krishna realized person we have to surrender to such a spiritual master and make relevant inquiries pari prashnena but along with this uh, making inquiries there should be sevaya we should also render service to the spiritual master in fact the shastras say one should render menial service to the spiritual master menial service why because the spiritual master is not inclined to reveal the most confidential knowledge to somebody who is proud somebody who is having false prestige somebody who is determined to enjoy the material world somebody is materially contaminated because they cannot understand this most confidential knowledge hmm? all these contaminations are due to primarily enviousness towards krishna by our very uh, nature acquired nature in this material world everyone who is materially contaminated is envious of krishna so to become free from this envy towards krishna we have to render menial service to the bona fide spiritual master by rendering menial service we become non envious we become free from all envy especially envy towards krishna because only then we can understand krishna is our real well-wisher ultimate well-wisher surudam sarva bhutana krishna has no envy towards anybody because sometimes the atheists challenge the 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 theists the devotees that if krishna is the well-wisher why are people suffering in this world you see how can people understand why are they suffering in spite of krishna being their well-wisher and krishna being the supreme controller and krishna being the 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 uh, the ultimate uh, um, lord of everyone it is not that krishna is powerless to uh, stop our suffering no it is we ourselves who bring upon ourselves all suffering by our foolishness by our ignorance 
by our being envious of Krishna. Our own actions. It is only our actions which are responsible for all our suffering. If somebody else seems to be inflicting some pain or some uh, suffering upon us, it is just that they are acting as instruments of the material energy in order for us to suffer the punishment that is due to us due to our own past sinful activities so to understand all this to realize this truth this simple direct fact of life is possible only when we cleanse our heart of the envy towards krishna envy towards krishna is not just envy towards krishna alone because krishna is not alone krishna is always with his parts and parcels so krishna means krishna with all his parts and parcels so in our envy towards krishna we also develop envy towards others so we are not only envious of krishna in material existence we are envious towards so many other people there are so many different reasons so until we give up this envy towards krishna and all others until we become completely free from envy nirmatsaranam satam bhagavatam it is declared in the beginning uh, uh, dharma projita kaitavo atra paramo nirmatsaranam satam this bhagavatam rejects all materially motivated religious systems and it can really be appreciated relished by those who are nirmatsara those who are completely free from all envy envy towards krishna and envy towards all other living beings only such people can properly relish bhagavatam but still even if somebody is not fully purified in the heart if they simply hear bhagavatam from the proper source from the bhagavatas from the pure devotees then also they can become purified of all enviousness hmm? devotional pure devotional service frees us from all kinds of envy so therefore chanting hare krishna will purify us of all enviousness then we come into a situ we situate ourselves in such a way that we can understand what is the cause of my material existence and what is the remedy for this uh, getting rid of all suffering and what is the best one among all the different remedies everything we can understand with a cool head uh, when we actually purify our consciousness of all enviousness so the simple process is the chanting of hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare this is what the bhagavatam instructs us ultimately bhagavatam is declaring the glories of pure devotional service and among the different methods of executing pure devotional service bhagavatam glorifies chanting and hearing the holy name of the supreme lord as the topmost most effective easiest process of pure devotional service i'll stop here rantara shrimad bhagavatam ki jay shla prabhupad ki jay hari krishna subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss any updates